civil defense engineer here with a quick episode. We're going to be interacting with this article from Defense Scoop on radios and their future use in the U.S. Army or not use. So the title here is Army could be moving to eliminate radios at the tactical edge. So basically they're saying that at the squad level, they're not going to be having handheld radios or any type of radio like that. So how are they going to be doing comms? Well, it seems that the way of the future is this type of ATAC kind of an in interface on your on your uh, chest rig here with a bunch of tactical options and stuff like that. They're going to be using this system for communications now. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit resistant to this because there are some issues, and we'll get into it in the article. So as the Army looks to modernize what it calls the next generation command and control architecture, the services vice chief says radios will be replaced by smartphone-like devices. We call these end user devices. And they're, they're, how do they communicate with each other? They're basically using mesh networks. So the Army's vision for its future network architecture likely won't include radios for communication and data at tactical level, according to top officials. So next generation command and control, state of the Army's future network and services, number one priority for modernization, blah, 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 a lot of stuff. So it aims to provide commanders with a new approach to information. Yep, okay, I understand wanting to, you know, stay ahead of the state of the art, but be careful here. So a prototype of the system was recently tested at uh, Fort Irwin in California in March. So basically what they're finding here, they want to get rid of two-way channel radios for uh, single and two-channel radios. I, don't, I think what they mean here is simplex and duplex, because... There's no radios that just have a single channel. That uh, I'm not exactly sure what they mean here. In their place will be what the Army calls end-user devices, which are Android devices strapped to the shoulder's chests and have typically been reserved for team leaders. So the team leader is the one that needs to have most of the battlefield information because he's the one making the shot, calling the shots. So these end-user devices feature position and location information. They can now also enable communication using emerging voice over IP technology. So it will presumably have a push to talk option so you can use it like a radio, but it uses a different technology, voice over IP. So the fundamental difference between the existing network and NGCC is in that data transport layer, because we are convinced that if we get that part right, there will be a day when our soldiers, instead of carrying all the equipment needed for their radio, it's just this end user device strapped onto their chest, basically, said General James Dingus, Army Vice Chief of Staff. So no more radios, no more batteries. We're all just carrying this end user device on the edge. So here's the question. If you go all in on this, and then you realize that it has a critical vulnerability then what do you do? So I, in my opinion, I don't think radios are going anywhere. And they do say in the article that at higher echelons, radios will absolutely always have a place, especially HF radio for long distance comms, things like that. But even at the squad level, I, I personally believe that they'll roll these out, but they won't replace radios. They'll just be there too, you know. Because you'll find out probably that it'll have some critical vulnerability, especially if you're you're packing so many capabilities into one device that does everything. That makes me a little nervous because I, as a civilian, have been now trying to get multiple devices that do everything my smartphone would do because I don't want all of that on my smartphone for my own dumb comsec reasons and stuff. So 
So Mingus explained, while the cloud storage and edge compute and storage are more refined, the terrestrial transport layer for data is something the Army will have to smooth out over the next year. Yeah. In the future, instead of using individual radios, forces will move radio frequency signals from point A to point B through pucks on trucks. So this, I think, is they are making their own mesh networks. So every vehicle, every everything that moves is going to have a little mesh node. So we've been talking about mesh-tastic. That's something that I've been considering more and more over ham radio. But I don't think ham radio will be completely replaced by it. It's just that mesh-tastic is, in a lot of ways, a lot more approachable to a lot of our members because they don't have ham licenses and don't have the time and motivation to get one. And they're also just texting on your smartphone and then connecting through your radio. So it's very familiar to people. It might take a little bit of setting up the app and all that, but uh, it's a lot more approachable than the ham radios. So I, I do understand where the army is coming from here because they're kind of they're kind of having the same realization that people are used to using smartphones. So let's use smartphones. <laughs> it it kind of makes sense. Uh, I'm just not sure how it's going to pan out ultimately. All right. So where are we here? Yep, we've been using radios for many years. Try to determine the right mix, what echelon will continue to use serve uh, radios and what will not. So some in the industry have noted there's a massive shift going on within the Army from what worked in the recent past to a penchant for something completely new. And it's not clear to some industry members why that's the case. Yep. So eliminating radios, voice over IP, Wi-Fi, 5G, all these things. So can it be jam? Uh, <laughs> if so, what's your your backup? Can can these end user devices do spread spectrum uh, comms? Can they do jam jam proof comms or frequency hopping and all that? Um, hopefully. So they warn it could put the army at risk of not having diverse enough architecture for what officials call PACE, primary alternate contingency and emergency. Yeah, this is something I've been harping on too for us citizen militias because a lot of people, yep, I got my bow fang or whatever handheld radio you have. And uh, that's all I need. Well, probably not. You need a whole SOI, signals operating instructions that has um, primary, alternate, maybe non-radio based comms at all. Maybe you've got some signals like what do, what do popping flares mean or smoke and that kind of thing. Um, and what do you do in an emergency? What do you do when the radio doesn't work? All that kind of stuff. So the army's got to figure that out too. And their pace plans probably are way more detailed than ours would be. So yeah. Um, how is this going to stack up against sophisticated adversaries with jamming capabilities and all sorts of stuff like that? To see such a drastic shift, the NGCC doesn't include any forms of radios. I think that puzzles a lot of people. It's a head scratcher. I agree. I don't think these radios are going to be going anywhere necessarily. They'll always have a place somewhere in that pace plan. So, um, it is a bit of a head scratcher, and I think the army will realize eventually that, you know, kind of like when they try to roll out a new infantry weapon system, like the next generation squad rifle or whatever that's called, they're trying to trying to replace the M4s. But M4s, there's just so many of them. They're so cheap and they're so effective that it's like it's really hard to replace. <laughs> so I think the same kind of thing might apply for radios, but time will tell. And as Tensions heat up around the world. We'll find out exactly how this shakes out. I dread sooner rather than later. But uh, we'll see. Until then, stay vigilant, everybody. This is Charlie Delta Echo, out.